kitchen and welcome to my channel cake I'm your hostess Suzanne today we're going to be making this super cute Mickey smash cake if you want to know how I made him and how you can make him too just keep watching okay let's go ahead and get started with Mickey's hands I did his ears a couple days ago I was working on another project I had some black fondant left over so I thought might as well just go ahead and make the ears so I will make the hands here to show you how I made them so let's go ahead and get started I have just a handful of white fondant here it is the Wilton preferred fondant and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of some hardening powder the most common brand is Tylos this is an off brand it works just fine I just sprinkle some down in the middle and then fold it in. You work it in as you go. And I'm going to apply a little bit of shortening here on my prep table just to stop the fondant from sticking. Taking a small little rolling pin here and I have a little, um, the guides here. These bands here just ensure that the fondant is the same thickness throughout. And we're gonna need four of these hands. No, Mickey doesn't have four hands. <laughs> Here's Mickey's hand cookie cutter. I got this from Amazon. I will link that down in the description box below for you guys. It came in a set. Let's go ahead and push that down here. And we're gonna turn it upside down this way. We'll put a little bit of shortening right here on this paper plate where the hand is going to go. Go ahead and take one of the hands. Try not to misshapen it. We're gonna lay it upside down here like that. And when we put the skewer on here, we don't want to push it down. We'll make the top part the part that's going to be the back side of the hand, like that. You can also add a little bit of water here just to help it stick in. Take the other side of his hand, like that. And we'll lay it on top. And on this side right here, you want to go ahead and press it down like that. So it adheres to the stick. I forgot to make the buttons while I had the camera rolling. So I took um, just a tip here and just made a circle and that will be Mickey's button for his pants. I just have some yellow fondant. It is mostly lemon yellow with a little bit of golden yellow in it. And now I'm going to cut it in half, ish. <laughs> Make a ball here to get all of the seams out first. And then just roll like this. Take a little sausage and just press it down with your thumbs. So you get the desired shape oops, and the desired size kind of like that that's easy now I just have to make another one just like it <laughs> that's the difficult part there we go here's Mickey's shoes and now we're just gonna go ahead and lay them to the side and let them firm up be back in one second okay let's continue with our Mickey smash cake if you remember just a couple seconds ago, we made Mickey's hands, but actually that was just one day ago. It wasn't one second ago, it was one day ago. And they are almost completely dry. They are dry enough to go ahead and use. I have two six inch white layers of cake and I have a six inch hemisphere ball cake on top. I have filled and crumb coated it and it has been in the freezer. I have also marked about two and a half inches up the side of the cake just with a knife. I made this card here just to mark the height here. I scored it so that way I know where to go with my bread pants. Okay, I have some buttercream frosting. I have dyed in red. This will be Mickey's pants. And I'm just going to take my offset spatula and apply some to this bottom area, but not to go over this line here. I started by applying this red frosty to the bottom of my cake with the offset spatula and visions of my red white and blue start cake for 4th of July came into my head and I said haven't you learned anything <laughs> remember guys I'm a home baker I have absolutely no training except for just trial and error so here we go I am here to help you <laughs> not make the mistakes I'm making and you guys are witnessing them as we go okay so here we go i started right here and i had that epiphany like what the heck are you doing girl so i went ahead and turned off the cameras and put some in a um, decorator's bag so let's go ahead and just apply it here and the, the the thing you the thing you have to remember with this technique is just with any of your techniques is just you want the same amount of frosting all the way around your cake i have my cake on a six inch cake board and on top of, and i put that on top of an eight inch cake board because we have 
We have to have room for Mickey's shoes. So we have to have a little bit of room here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply and squeeze as we go and turn the turntable. If you don't have a turntable, just move your body or however you wanna do it. Like that. And there's no template to this cake. It's just an all by your vision and your imagination, right? So this is his pants and I want his shoes to be slightly smaller than the pant height. So this is how we decided how high we want this red, the pants to go. I just measured out his shoes and went a couple half inch higher than that. There we go. Now we just want to make this red frosting smooth. And I just have a bench scraper here and we want to make sure that this is straight up and down, not tilted, and I like to do that by placing it on the cake board and just barely swiping the top of it. We can always go around more than once. We do not want to push this frosting up too much, so I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure, and just wipe it off like that. Oh, I made a mess on my cake board. Go around again. Let's go ahead and check it out for areas we might need to do a little patchwork. There's one right there. There's one right there. Oop, there's a good one right there. Let's go around again. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the next step, but before we do, I want to let you guys know what I did off camera. I took a metal bench scraper and ran it over hot water and then dried it off really good and came back and made this surface really nice and smooth. The heat of the metal bench scraper melts that buttercream and makes it really nice and smooth. That's just a nice little trick. I put it back in the freezer and cleaned off the cake board as well as I'm going to. <laughs> and for the next step for this cake, all we do is make a ton of rosettes all the way around this white part. I have a large Wilton's decorator back here. I have the tip 2D, which I'm going to use for my rosettes. And we're just going to start. We're going to put layers on top of layers so it doesn't matter how perfect they are right now. And we want some of this just to go barely over this pant line like that Last time I made this cake, I just kept making layers of rosettes on top of each other. But I think I'm just gonna put little, little stars in between where there's a gap or where I don't like it, how the end is frayed. I think I'm just gonna do that this time, like that. Decorating, no right or wrong way to do it is, how, is however you just envision it, that's all. If you like it this way, then do it that way. If you want to do it the way you saw it done on a picture or the way you saw another YouTuber doing it, just, just, do, just do you. <laughs> the last time I made this cake, I made this top more round and how I did that was by adding cake pop material <laughs> around the sides to make it more of a dome. I like this just as well. You can do it either way. And if you want to know how I made those domes before and prior cakes, check out my Oscar the Grouch cake and my Elmo Smash cakes. I did that technique on both of those cakes and you can do that as well for this cake. Okay, let's go ahead and add Mickey's feet, hands, buttons, and ears, okay? Let's find the, the fa our favorite spot on the cake. We'll make that the front. And I think right here is gonna be the front. So let me go ahead and put the feet there. You can either apply toothpicks to the back side of this. Today, I'm just gonna try and see if this buttercream works. <laughs> I did the toothpick last time. And we just wanna set it 
like that. That looks cute. And we want to leave enough room for the two buttons in the middle. Next, we're gonna put his buttons on. And I have this Wilton's called Food Writers. And it's just a black felt tip pin that is edible. I'm gonna put two little dots on each one of these buttons. Like that. Apply a little bit of buttercream to the back. And next we're gonna put on Mickey's ears. And stick it at an angle. So now let's go ahead and do our hands or the gloves. And Mickey has those three marks that go down his hand. And I'm just gonna use a Wilton edible marker here and just freehand it. And it gets bigger and then it gets smaller as it gets towards his wrist. You can use anything. You could use black fondant for this. Just make a little snail-like pieces of fondant. There we go, that looks cute. Okay, now that we have our black little marks on Mickey's hands, let's go ahead and stick it in the cake. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means the world to me, it really does. If you're not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It is quick and it's easy, but most importantly, it's totally free. If you like this Mickey Mouse smash cake, give Mickey a big old thumbs up. If you want to be notified every time I upload a video, just hit that bell. It's called the notifications bell. It'll send you an email as a reminder. I am having an amazing day. I hope you are as well. Until next time, make it a great day.